Hello and welcome to the Winning Post. I'm Mohit Lalwani and a big weekend behind us in India. It was the Invitation Cup weekend. The defending champion Kwasar and India's highest rated horse against the young pretender Desert God. Well, we know how it worked out, but here's a recap. The Madras Race Club is India's oldest race course. Set up in 1777, the course saw its days of glory before being relegated to dormant status for close to two decades. The club regained some of its old sheen as it hosted the Invitation Carnival after a gap of 11 long years. The Invitational races see the cream of the country's horse racing and hosting it is no mean feat. The Madras Race Club witnessed a crowd of 25,000 race goers on the weekend of March 5th and 6th who enjoyed the racing carnival. March 5th saw the running of the Sprinters Cup and the Stairs Cup, while March 6th saw the running of the Super Mile and the King of All Races, the Invitation Cup. First up was the Hindu Sprinters Cup, a Grade 1 race for horses 4 years old and upwards over a distance of 1200 meters. This year's running saw 8 horses line up at the starting gates. Leading the pack was Adam, trained by Pacey Shroff, along with his winning partner P. Trevor. After losing out to Dancing Francis in his last start, the Dr. S.C. Gen Sprinters Championship on Feb 14th in Mumbai, he was now looking at making a winning comeback this time around. Dancing Phoenix, trained by Dallas Todiwala, was the tote favourite here. He had run fourth the last time out at the Dr. S.C. Gen Sprinters Championship and this time around with Pete Kamlesh in the saddle would be looking at improving on that performance. Another one to watch out for here was Acclaim, trained by Pacey Shroff. Acclaimed, who has a record of 8 wins from 22 starts, would be looking for a winning moment here with Suraj Naredu in the saddle. In fourth. After that is Acclaimed making a forward move and Adam is the one galloping strongly on the outside. Why does to fall is Vijay Vidasa. But it is Dancing Phoenix shortening his stride from Constantine. And just look at Adam is absolutely cruising on the stand side. And it is going to be Adam on the stand side. Win the Hindu Sprinters Cup from Dancing Phoenix Constantine. Trainer Pacey Shroff was delighted with the win from Adam and quoted that Gindi had proved to be a happy hunting ground. Adam clocked a time of 1 minute 10.18 seconds from the existing record of Imtia Setra in Blue Horizon who had clocked 1 minute 10.37 in 2005. Dancing Phoenix was in second while Acclaimed rounded it off with a third place finish. Next up was the Vilu Poonawala Stairs Cup, a Grade 1 race for horses 4 years and older over a distance of a gruelling 3,000 metres. 11 horses came into the fray, however, all eyes were on Tintin Nabulation, trained by LVR Deshmukh, who was ridden by P.S. Johan. Tintin Nabulation won the Golconda Derby, the Indian Turf Invitation Cup and the Bangalore St. Ledger in his classic year, and would this year be looking at making his mark in the Stairs Cup. Toro Loco, trained by Irfan Gadala, had Suraj Naredu in the saddle. Toro Loco has 10 wins and 5 places from his 25 starts. Toro Loco won the Bangalore Derby Grade 1 and has had some good races and would be looking at giving Tintinabulation a run for his money. And they're off and racing for the Vilu Poonawala Stairs Cup. A level break by all the runners. And as they settle down, Supreme Minstrel rockets to the front, making sure this is going to be a solidly run race. In second position there is Ancient Title, about a length and a half away, King Charles from Hyderabad. Then on the outside of King Charles there's Okavango. We go back a length and a half then to Tintinibulation along there with wind chimes just behind him. Two and a half behind is Agostini, then with Toro Loco, a length behind Toro Loco there comes Rodeo. Aventus and Native Force both keeping each other company as they approach the winning post for the first time. Supreme Minstrel from Chennai is the leader as they string out in single file. A length the good of Okavango in second. Ancient title is third. About four lengths adrift. We've got King Charles from Hyderabad. Another four behind him is the Stinton Ebulation. He's tracked two lengths away there by Win Chai. By Win and then a length and a half behind them there. We go back there to uh, Agostini. About two behind Agostini. Then is Toro Loco, Rodeo. A length behind Rodeo is Aventus. One behind him and that's Native Force. They're still going at one hell of a clip and it continues to be as a uh, Supreme Minstrel being passed now by Okavango finding it slow and he's taken it up. 
Okavango now by about two and a half, three lengths there from uh, Supreme Minstrel in second, five lengths away, then we go back there to Ancient Title, four lengths behind to King Charles, a further five lengths away, and we've got Tintinibulation, two lengths behind Tintinibulation, then comes the Windstream, about a distance away then to Agostini, followed there by Toro Loco, then there's Rodeo, about three away to his uh, Supreme Minstrel, who is Aventus, and in the rear is Native Force. It's almost as though they're running in two separate groups and Okavango has stolen a very useful lead as they approach the 1200 meter marker. He's about five lengths now, the good of Supreme Minstrel in second. In third there is ancient title, King Charles closing the gap and being coming up in fourth. Another two and a half away, Tintinibulation in fifth. Another two behind the Tintinibulation, Windstream. Further four lengths behind is Agostini, Rodeo making a forward move along with him on the outside. Then there's Toro Loco, Aventus making a quick forward move to be up there. And then we go back to Native Force. The field suddenly closing in, but Okavango as they pass the 800 is still about two and a half lengths. The good of Supreme Minstrel, Ancient Title is struggling to stay there. Rodeo has made very rapid progress to be up with them. So too is King Charles, a length and a half behind King Charles. Then is Windstream, then Agostini. And then we go back there to Native Force. Round the turn now and into the straight and Supreme Minstrel wins it back by about a length and a half there from Okavango. Uh, from its Tintinibulation who wins it from uh, Okavango in second position. Then there's King Charles followed there by Agostini but they all seem to be under pressure. With about 200 to run and Tintinibulation is running away from them. He's loving it out there in front. The winner of the Invitation 2013 is going to pull off a big upset here. Tintinibulation from Hyderabad comes out to win the state. Will Punavala Stairs Cup here from... It was a 3000 meter race and this horse is out and out stair. In fact, he won uh, last uh, 2013, he won Invitation, he won Calcutta Derby also. And uh, after that he lost a little bit form, but this time he was in a good form. He was moving all the way quite comfortable. He, normally, sometimes he takes a slow jump, but at this race he take a level, a level jump and uh, I was settling, uh, he was settled in mid bunch. But all the way he was showing the good response, he was quite comfortable and quite keen, moving very well. Coming to the straight, the pace has become slow down uh, before the straight. So I had to take over from 600 meter and he gave a good response to me, even quite well. 600 when I started moving, I know that he is going to make it. Tintin Abulation won the race and brought home the desired result as he was keen and travelled nice and easy all through the final furlong. Toro Loco was second by three and a quarter lengths while Agostini was in third. The next day saw the running of the major PK Mehra Memorial Super Mile Cup. The race, as the name suggests, is run over 1600 meters and is open to horses 4 years and older. 11 horses made their way to the starting gates this time around. Myrtle Wood from Pacey Shroff's stable was the foremost contender here. Her full sister Amelia won the race at Hyderabad in 2014, while her dam Adamai claimed it on this very track in record time in 2001. In third is... Uh... On the inside is Shivalik Storm, length and a half away is the Bowl Command keeping in company Myrtlewood making a slight forward move as they pass the 1200, very close behind is the Moon Shadow struck about four of the fence and there's a claim. After that is uh, Emperor Cruz made a forward move, that's my darling, second last, last to fall is Ace Pio Shifalas. With a thousand to go is Shivalik Storm on the outside, lead by half, three quarter from Apache, two away is uh, Baratheon, um, bowl command in fact towards the inside, McEwellenism making a forward move with half a mile remaining, Moonshadow making a forward move not too far away, his Myrtlewood is ridden well off the pace, after that is Emperor Cruz, on the outside is Baratheon in the golden brown at the pass to 600, third last is the claim, second last, that's my darling, last of all is Ace Beauty Palace as they turn for home. Around the turn and into the street, Shivalik Storm is the leader from Machiavellanism making a forward move. Moon Shadow is in third, then there's Apache. Myrtlewood is now improving nicely in between horses. After that is Bold Kamar. But it is going to be Myrtlewood in the center, ridden hands and heels, a length and a half in front of Machiavellanism. Bold Command is making a forward move, but Myrtlewood about three lengths ahead of Bold Command. Myrtlewood makes it in the major PK Mara Super Mile Cup. She's a good filly, she ran a great race. My trainer told me to settle her and uh, 
come from the uh, give a little chance and then make a move so she gave a good uh, response she settled nicely early part she was a little bit keen but after that she settled nicely and she gave a good response in the end she's a top class player she was giving all the way she was giving that confidence that she'll definitely be there so it was, i was not having any doubt on her that she's not going to give because normally she give a response in the end of the last part of the race only so she's moving quite comfortable and i was quite confident in the race that she will definitely do the best mertlewood brought glory once again to the shroff stables as she emerged a winner without raising a sweat bolkaman was in second by 3 and a quarter lengths while machiavellianism was in third by half a length The weekend culminated with the 54th running of the Indian Turf Invitation Cup. 13 horses were in contention for the race to be run over 2400 meters and it promised to be a keen duel of champions of the classic crop and the champion older horses. Desert God saddled by S Padmanabhan had his winning mate David Allen in the saddle. Desert God has a record of 6 wins from 11 starts. With the Kingfisher Ultra Indian Derby firmly under his belt, he would now be looking at taking home the king of all races, the Indian Turf Invitation Cup. He would be opposed by Kwasar, trained by Malish Naredu, who was ridden by Yash Naredu. There is another length further behind there, is uh, Angel Dust, uh, is uh, Be Safe, then comes Angel Dust, New Orleans is the back marker. They are heading past the 1600 meter mark. And now, Smart Strider continues to lead the field by about a length in front of Heaven is here. Shivalik showers, then about three lengths further away is Kosa. Desert God comes in next, blazing touch. After that, there another two lengths further behind there is Dare to Dream. Then comes Be Safe, another length further behind is Costa del Sol. Angel Dust and New Alliance is the back marker. Back to the leader now, Smart Strider as they head past the 1200 meter marker. Continues to lead this field now from heaven is here. Two lengths behind there, Shivalik Shaw still in third. Another two and a half behind there, Squasa sitting pretty in fourth there as they head past the 1000 meter marker. Blazing Touch comes in next. Desert God has got a nice position along the rails there. Two and a half lengths uh, further behind there is uh, B Safe now beginning to make his move on the outside. After that there is Costa del Sol and then there is uh, Angel Dust in New Orleans. Back to the leader, Smart Strider continues to lead this field from heaven is here. Corsa beginning to make up on the outside as they head past the monument and begin to negotiate the turn. And Shivalik Shahs is on the outside but heaven is here for now takes over the running from the inside well not giving up the the position in front there is smart strider 400 meters in the indian turf invitation cup desert god is the first one comes to challenge smart strider smart strider still in front of desert god b safe after that there is uh, costa del sol costa is uh, uh, lost in the it's costa in front now costa costa from uh, desert god desert god from costa desert god wins the indian turf invitation cup from costa A new champion of champions was crowned and it was Desert God who took home the Invitation Cup this year. David Allen rode a splendid race and emerged a winner at the post against a superhero Quasar who was second by a neck and B Safe who was third by four and a quarter length. And four class performances there. Desert God, Tintinabulation, Myrtlewood and Adam, two of the four Go to Pacey Shroff, one to Padmanabhan and one to Deshmukh. It was a Pacey Shroff weekend all in all. We'll take a short break, come back, don't go anywhere. And welcome back. Now you've heard the saying in horse racing, no foot, no horse. But what about teeth? How important is that? Dr. Kiran explains. <music> Dr. Kiran, first and foremost, dentistry in horses. You know, the concept in itself is a little hard to grasp for a normal layman. How important is it? Yeah, it's very important. Uh, if the horse can't eat properly, he can't take an appropriate amount of calories, so he's not going to perform well. Okay, what are some of the standard procedures in dentistry? Well, I'm going to show you some, but the standard procedures would be floating the teeth, making sure there's no sharp points, um, and then just good uh, husbandry like food management, making sure there's a lot of food there throughout the day because as you know, horses are herbivores, they're designed to be eating up to 18 hours per day. Our race formulas are quite 
concentrated meals and it doesn't take too long for them to chew them up and swallow them. So we need to make sure they are still chewing throughout the day to maintain that growth of the teeth so they don't become over, overly grown and sharp. Okay, and what are some of the most common problems you find? The most common problems we find are just sharp enamel points. Um, the molars and the premolars uh, are angled like this and so you do get the overgrowth uh, on the inside and the outside which can cut the tongue and cut the inside of the mouth. Um, obviously we see injuries, um, the horses will bang their heads and maybe knock out a front tooth and size a, uh, Other common th things we see are premolars, the little wolf teeth, uh, we, so we'll, we'll pull those things out. Um, that's about it. Why are wolf teeth considered dangerous or, you know, why are they pulled out? They're not too terrible, to be honest. Uh, they've, they've got a bit of a bad rap, but they're small little vestigial premolars and they're right beside the, the main premolars where the bit sits. So sometimes the bit with the jockeys pulling on it, it can bang up against these little teeth. Um, and as, because they're so small, they, they, make, they can move around a little and so that causes inflammation and pain. So most people just like to remove them so, so it's not to harm the horse. And of course, one common saying, you know, saying for a horse to, to uh, refer to a horse's age is a horse is long yeah. in the tooth. So how do you tell a horse's age by his teeth? Okay, so the easiest way to judge a horse by its teeth is you need a knowledge of, well, they have two sets of teeth. They have deciduous and adult teeth. So we can, uh, we can work out the age of a horse by knowing um, which teeth should erupt by a certain amount of age and which uh, teeth should be shed and so we can go from there but then we can also look at the occlusal surface of the bottom incisors because as they wear they have distinct little patterns so we can judge it from there as well but the easiest way is just to check the brand. Just one last question when we were talking, talking to Dr. Koos yesterday he very interestingly pointed out that uh, you know keeping a horse's teeth filed plays an important role in controlling the colic. Yes that's, that's true it does have a degree of significance because if they're not chewing their food properly then um, semi-digestive, well, semi-masticated food is going through the digestive system and so if it's not fully masticated up so the bacteria in the, in the gut can actually have a go at it then you're getting long strings, stringy pieces of, of hay and un, unmasticated food going through which can cause a blockage in the, uh, in the anatomy of the horse's stomach because it has all kinds of little sharp turns. So it needs to be completely chewed up properly. Okay so this is a rotating disc burr. It's quite it's harsh on teeth, not, not harsh as in it's going to hurt them, but it does a good job at filing them down, but it's quite, it's fine on soft tissue, like I can, I can put it on my hand, it doesn't, it doesn't do much, but it's dynamite on enamel. Uh, for the younger horses up to five years of age, they stop shedding their um, baby teeth at five. I would probably suggest every six months, just to make sure, make sure they're shedding properly, the caps, and uh, just to keep an eye on these sharp points. So here's like the dental arcade. If we have three molars, three premolars, we have um, canine teeth here, and then three sets of incisors on the other side. Okay, so the wolf teeth, if they're present, they're up here against the first, well this, this is the second premolar. The first premolar is the wolf tooth and you can see where it has been, the little holes in the, um, in the bone. Um, so that's where they would have been, but they've, they've been removed. And <clears throat> you can see um, how the jaw works. It's not just straight up and down motion, it's grinding as well. So the, the horse will move its, its jaws like this. And these sharp enamel points that I was talking about before, they grow along here and on the inside of the bottom. So when I was using the, the disc, the rotating disc, I was burring these sharp edges off. And with the age thing, as you can see here, there's a little, a little pattern. Uh, this is obviously quite a young horse because it still has a cup here. But as the horse ages and these teeth are worn down, it'll make a smooth, almost a smooth surface. And we can see um, interdigitations of different colours, which is the enamel, uh, dentine, pulp cavity. So we can start to try and age a horse through, through that. Well, with the baby horse, anyway, um, all the incisors will be there by nine months. And then uh, they're shed as the horse gets older and the permanent teeth the permanent incisors come down from two and a half 
three and a half and four years. So the front incisors will be down by two and a half and then proper wear by, th by, its, turn up by the time it turns three and then so forth. Um, so we can tell how old a horse is up to five quite easily by looking at these. And then <clears throat> there's no deciduous molars, they're just permanent. And they turn up at uh, one years old, two years old and four years old. The pre-molars, the, uh, the baby ones are shed at two and a half, three and four years old. So we can look at a horse and like, I can feel there's caps, the caps of the baby teeth. So if I could feel caps here, I, I could estimate that the horse's age is about four, four to five. The canine teeth are usually erupted about five years old. From there, we can still age a horse all the way up to 30 by looking at the, the most outside incisor. It, it has a little groove on it. This, this one's missing, oh here it is. As a horse <coughs> turns 10, a little groove appears about here. You can't see it because this horse is too young. Uh, and it, but as the horse ages, the little groove moves down the tooth. So at 15, it's halfway down. By 20, it's the full length. At 25, it's disappeared, but it's only in the distal half of the tooth. And by 30, it's completely gone. Wow. Well, and on that note, it's time for a short break. We'll come right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Winning Post. Moving right along, two big races this week, and it is the CN Wadia after who this race course at Mahalakshmi was named, and the Audi Juvenile Million. Just five runners in that, and a small field in the CN Wadia too. But I can tell you, both are extremely competitive. <music> The Audi Million has five contenders and right at the top is one aim in Dr. Ramaswamy's colours. One aim, a son of atmosphere, went on to win his second start by an increasing five length margin. Has been working extraordinarily well and will be a top contender here. One aim won last time very well, very impressive and uh, he's come up from that race, he's feeling well, he's eating well, he's worked well. I think he's going to put in a very good show. Who makes the rules made his debut just two weeks ago and he might find this sharp. However, he was impressive enough and as a full brother to a horse that ran second in the Indian Derby is one that could be the one to beat. In the Audi Multimillion, I have uh, who makes the rule running. Uh, he won his last start just a few days back. Though this race is coming too quick for him. But he's a horse who is uh, showing improvement after the last run and uh, he's feeling well so we are going to take our chances. It's going to be a competitive race, uh, there are um, uh, good uh, winners are running in that race and especially that filly called uh, Senerita uh, who is won well and working well. It's a very open race actually and we are taking a chance and hoping for the best. Serenita is the talking horse here, winner of a grade 3 race makes this an extremely competitive set. Whoever beats Serenita will be the one that wins. Good thing in Shivain Surindranath's colours is a front-running horse. Plenty of speed and if Good Thing can hold out to the post, Good Thing will also be in the mix. I've got uh, Good Thing running over there and she won her last race, uh, you know, beating a really good horse of Pacey's. So we have uh, high hopes for her and she's a pretty straightforward filly. So there's not much to do with her, I just need to keep her happy and uh, fit and uh, she's got a pretty lengthy break also after her last race. So she's, she's, feeling, she's feeling well and I hope uh, she runs a big race. Finally, sparkling eyes from Imtia State Stable in Vivek Jain's silks won impressively first time out beating a horse that's come out and won since. Sparkling eyes did have a setback but is arguably at her best for what is going to be an extremely competitive race. Well, and that's all we have on this episode of The Winning Post. Thank you for joining me. Do follow me on Twitter at Mohit Lalvani for our tips from the weekend. Till I see you on the next episode, goodbye. And as always, may the horse be with you.